Lucasi Custom presents the Derby City Classic Nine Ball Championship. These guys have battled for nine days to get to this career-defining moment. Our first player is known as Mr. Smooth, but I think of, think of him as Mr. Consistent because he never beats himself. All the way from Toronto, Canada, John Mora. <laughs> Our next player comes to us from England. He's a great billiards commentator with one problem. He plays too well. He's found himself here in the finals. The, let's give it up for the very personable Chris Melling. We'll be right back with all the action in one minute. Hello and welcome everyone to the finals of the 2018 Derby City Classic Nine Ball Championship. The winner of this match creates a legend for himself and will be immortalized with his picture hung over all future Derby City Classics. Tonight we have special guest Jeremy Jones alongside myself, Mark Wilson. And Jeremy, give us something to look for. Well, I look for John just uh, winning the lag. Might be a little sign that he just played a match right here on this table. and. Chris played a pressure-packed uh, long match with Dennis. Uh, really had a had kind of a high-pressured ending as well, uh, the way the last game was played. Um, but I look for John to probably open up, maybe with running some racks here to start this match, especially if he just gets the first shot that first game. I don't feel like you're going to see many misses by either player. It's just a matter of who uh, takes advantage of their opportunities and doesn't miss positions. Uh, yeah, Mora does not create unforced errors, and we watched him earlier. What he's got going is he's making great decisions and supporting it with great execution. Yeah, and then obviously Chris is doing a lot of the same. He wouldn't be here in the final of this great event, and this the 20th anniversary of our D Derby City Classic. Um, but the one thing I did look from when we were doing the match earlier in the semifinal, I was watching quite a bit of Chris's match. And I didn't really see many mistakes other than the cue ball on the break a little bit. Not only did it scratch once, it got kissed out of a scratch another time and went towards that side pocket a couple other times. So that's something that he can't afford here in the final. And maybe I give a little edge to uh, John as far as containing the cue ball on the break. And hopefully I didn't jinx him right here. But <laughs> Six ball on the wing, but six ball down. Let's see how nice the cue ball was contained right there. Got a couple of kisses now. Oh, this four ball, what's it going to do? I think he's a little, it's close. It's a, if, little, it's a little bit of a tester. <laughs> it sure is. Well, he's got to hit it with a nice speed to come out around the head string in between the eight and three, probably. On an entirely separate note, I think Moore has been more in the TV arena than Melling. I don't remember very many matches of him being here, so that would have to be an advantage as well, getting used to the lights and the table condition. Well, John had a similar shot against SVB in the semifinal on the two ball where he'd, he had to go three rails and he missed it. Here he has to just come out one rail, just a nice medium stroke. He can afford to be a little long, like so. Yeah, Yeah, hit the thin side of the pocket just a little bit. Cue ball traveling an extra eight or ten inches. Yeah, but he had a light speed on it, just which is totally... Uh, uh, opposite of the, the ball he missed in the last match that was similar. He had to put a lot of speed on it. He actually hit the pocket about the same place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on these diamonds, if you go into that side pocket with any speed, you pretty much have to hit the center of the hole. Yeah, it will reject them quite easily. It's almost kind of amazing the way it does sometimes. All right, <laughs> this is a funny shot because he needs to, he can't let up on it and let the cue ball fall towards the five much. But he can't overhit it and go too far. I'm not sure the three passes he ate in the side. And if it does, that's he's okay. But that was like an in-between kind of stroke. And it, sometimes that one can, can get away from you whenever you're, especially in a, in a final like this. Right. It's like a hit and a half of eight iron or something. It's yeah, one of those weird shots just, you don't yeah, use that often. Or even tougher, really, I think, like the 40-yard shot, you know, in golf, they mm -hmm. say, which I, I played a little golf. It never was very good. But that shot got me a lot of times, that's for sure. But yeah, anytime you're not having to getting to commit totally to what you're doing. Nevertheless, he he did a pretty nice job. Oh, 
And you'll find playing nine ball, it's a lot of times the balls are accessible. It's just a matter of keeping it simple and getting to the next shot with a little bit of an angle. Yeah. You will notice that he could have worked the cue ball a little closer to the four, but he chose not to to preserve the angle and make the shot play a little bit easier into the pocket. Totally willing to take a slightly longer shot. And this is the type of shot that I think the table to open up is not going to really uh, slow John down, like coming two rails just floating into position with spin like this. I think that type of shot, if you hadn't been on the table as much, you could under hit or even, believe it or not, over hit a little much mm -hmm. and uh, may maybe get snookered. Because he had to use really the spin to create a little more of the angle. Right. The seven ball takes away just maybe a fourth of the pocket is all. Not a big hindrance, except it's in your eye line, and that gets you distracted just a little bit. Yeah, and this is another one you're better off. Don't let up on it too much. You can afford a little bit of angle on, this, on the seven, so. Oh, and he just overcut it a little bit. Be interesting to see what happens here now. This is a little funny. <laughs> this, is. Is, this is real flat, and this ball's deep in the pocket. So you may see him load up and try and hit the top edge of this with a lot of high and, and get around the seven ball. Otherwise, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Well, Chris will not take a lot of time. That's that's the one thing we know. Well, do you just roll it and hope everything rolls exactly straight and, he, and you play short side here, Mark? Yeah, uh, weird as it I sounds, he's he, may go, a stroke out. he might go into the seven. Like that. That's what I was okay. thinking. Like, just really let her out. Warp her around. Yeah. <laughs> just don't let up on it. You know, the key is a lot yeah. of people let up a little bit and it just straightens out and goes in that corner. A lot of times you'll scratch. So Melling relies on a lot of shot making. And that hails back to his English eight ball and snooker days. Super firepower. Some of his nine ball tactics, sometimes a little questionable, not quite as refined as what we see a lot of the other top level players, but he overcomes it with just pure shot making. Well, I think that shows you just, you know, a lot of people sometimes say, oh, nine ball or ten ball rotation games, they aren't that tough. Well, sometimes the way the game's been played today with some of the templates and things, it makes it look like the game's a little easier than what it really is. So my point thing is I think Chris is still learning some of the game, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. you no, know, for like, sure. You know, especially even with some of the discussions we've had that it seems like he's sometimes in a little question, oh, should I go this route or should I go that route? Mm-hmm. And not saying that execution wouldn't get him, get him through both of them, but he wants to play the percentage route. Right, so. right. You and I grew up playing pool, so we were accustomed. It's just almost instinctive at this point where if, if you just have never played it, but you're a pretty good cumin, uh, you don't know. You know the snooker routes. You don't know the nine ball position patterns. So. Right. And it's not like they show up, but just, just you know, if it's one out of, an extra one out of, uh, 10 less mistakes in in a, mm -hmm. in a week or whatever many of these guys make. There's not many, believe it or not. But if it's, if you're eliminating what is already a small number, if you're eliminating a portion of that, well, you're doing something. Nick Barner says his paycheck goes up at the end of the week. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Nick, he's funny. Uh, a lot of the guys that had been in this booth in past years, they were great. Grady was, I, I always oh. loved listening to Grady and Buddy and Billy and yeah, there's a lot of guys. Uh, I think Grady and Billy were the best duo ever in their prime. <laughs> That's they're my favorite commentators. I know that. Yeah, they. I think they did the U.S. Open final that I won, uh, if I remember correctly, and it was a pretty good one to watch. Oh no, excuse me, that was uh, Jim Weish. Uh, they did the uh, the one I lost actually, <laughs> the one against Johnny in '99. Okay, that's not gonna bode well as far as just the way those balls came off the rack really didn't have anything threatening the hole it's not like he barely missed a corner ball or right. something yeah the wing ball missed by quite a bit okay fortunately enough uh he's got him in a funny spot here as far as rolling out because you can only there's only so many places you can roll out to where you can see the ball first off mm-hmm so, and there's, it's not like one of those situations you can roll out to a kick and feel pretty confident in the kick. So he's going to probably have to either roll out to just a sliver of the one, which is difficult a little bit, or a real tester on the one, which is, I, I believe it's got to be the sliver of the one, right, Mark? Yeah. Just, he, I yeah. wouldn't even object if he rolled down by the seven. But 
Well, he's going to get the worst of it. But the thing is, everything here, he's the underdog. I think this is okay. He's trying to tie that up, which is always a little dangerous when you're trying to tie a ball up with the nine. All right. But if he's left him where this is makeable, there's no chance that Chris should give it back, even if he has to take a little chance on position. Mm hmm. This but maybe he got to the sliver that you were talking about because I'm, I don't see Chris being excited to shoot. So he's looking like he's going to thin this for safe. Well, that's the good thing about having both. You can still thin it if you don't like the shot, but you can't pass it back is my point. You can't oh, give it up. Completely agree Even with if you. you don't want to make it and you want to elect to try and run the cue ball safe. Oh, nice. If it it's doesn't hit the go. point. It, no, it did hit the point. That hurt him a little bit. But that was a chance that was worth taking for what the oh, result could have been. Absolutely. And initially when it came off that in rail, it looked good. Like it was going to get past the point and really bury him behind the eight and nine. But now he's probably going to be upwards around behind the three maybe. I'm or, thinking, yeah. Or maybe the cue, back, cue ball back behind the eight and nine again and the one underneath the three, five, and what that be, the six. That's all right, too. Oh, he double kissed. <laughs> and just as we said uh, what wouldn't happen as far as a couple execution errors, uh, we thought it may be Chris yeah. to start off on this table. I really feel like your second shot, thinning the one and letting the cue ball go back by the nine was better because the two's on the other end of the table. You don't really want to send the one down by the nine anyway, if you can yeah. help it. Yeah, and you really had to uh, make the cue ball go a long ways off the end rail to get up underneath the three. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe running the cue ball there uh, maybe kind of like Chris was trying to initially was okay. And now he can't quite come across the one and get behind the eight and nine, but he could certainly use the two four and place the one out in the middle of the table and come across and, and lay the cue ball down by the eight and nine. That's possible. He can come back behind the three with the cue ball and cut the one down towards the eight and nine. Is he trying to be offensive here? I don't know. Uh, the shot I kind of like, I don't know if we can get the overhead. <clears throat> but if it lays right to cut across here yeah. and just move the one ball out here yeah, with yeah. a little bit of running English and just try to thread it into that area. Yeah. He went for the shot. How's the speed? That that can work, but also it can leave it uncovered. Yeah, he can get in between the, the two eight, I believe, here and kick this ball out. I th I'm pretty sure. The deal with Chris for my shot would be if he thought the point of the side pocket was too big, then he couldn't wrangle around with that. But well, that's why I was saying that initially. I was saying your shot, but don't try and get behind the 8-9. Just right. put the one out in the middle and use the 2-4. I exactly. think he could have done that pretty easily. Okay, he's going to try and put the one out in the center of the table. If you try to get it all the way to the end rail, oh, this is going to work out nice, though. <laughs> Uh, he's in he's in trouble here as far as mm -hmm. not so much hitting it, but just I don't really see anything natural that's going to happen as far as trying to kick it. Now, he could try to kick it and thin the ball and run the cue ball over here, but that's dangerously trying to maybe foul. I almost think he should take a foul, maybe like bank the three up by the five or something like that. Oh, you can't do that. You, you get three fouled from there. He shaved the one underneath the four two, and you can't get to that one very easily. He can run the cue ball down here. Wow, I can't. This is a. Uh, I'm not so sure about this one. Well, this is the area of the game that Chris Melling will be a little bit suspect in, just from his lack of familiarity of playing it. Well, I'm, even though I'm, I'm, I, I'll tell you, I wasn't in love. Yeah. First off, I wasn't in love with the kick shot, but I knew I still had to kick at it. I think. I don't think your kick shot's going to get any better. Is my point. I mean, the one rail cross hitting it very hard was very easy. Well, the, and just take true. your chances, you know. No, that's true. But also, if you tie something up and then you have to kick it like this where you're exposed and naked, and that's what way it's laying, if you kick at it now, you're not likely to get separation. So, Yeah, he that, shouldn't have much distance between the – he should probably get this cue ball hair closer to the one ball when you shoot this shot. You really just want to rock it. Don't worry about getting behind the three. Just lay him down here on the back. If you get behind the three, I guess that's kind of extra. But you could give up the one then. Oh, boy. Good yeah, shot. Well, still now. Good shot. Woo!
this would be the advantage of having some other ball tied up, though, is that you could just go ahead and slug at it, you know. And then, yeah, I agree. But at the same time, I, st I mean, game, nine ball, you know you have to, we're playing nine ball where luck counts. I mean, you mm -hmm. just have to create some luck sometimes. Yeah. And, or evaluate the situation. That's, like right there right. now, if the one, two, four weren't so tied up, yeah. and maybe it was just two balls lodged together and I couldn't get to him. Well, yeah, maybe I'll do mm -hmm. something different. But where he's going to put the one in a bad spot oh, for yeah. you. So. Now, now it's going to be real tough because he doesn't have it. And now, see, he's taking the second foul trying to tie something up. Well, at that but time, that's too about, late. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be too late anyways. We'll see how it plays out. Looks to me he could shave the one and just drift the cue ball right towards that 7-6. Uh, and that's about all he needs. Just lay the one underneath the 4-2. But the thing is, he moved it a lot last time. And, yeah. and that's because he had it so far away from it. Like when you shoot this kind of shot, you really want it just right next to it. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's going a different route, and I'm not sure this is going to... But do you see what I'm saying? Set yes. it up left of the yes. of the one and just shave the one underneath. The two's on the left side, got it blocked where you can't get to it. And just drift the cue ball over top of the six seven. Yeah, he needs to be both times, ball in hand, he should have been much closer to the object ball to begin with. Well, this time it looks like he's really not worrying about no, it looks like he's, it thin. He's just trying to bury him underneath the three. Right. I really like the three three cushion route to get underneath the three better because you can go thinner on the one. Oh, I think that's what he's doing. Well, he's pretty far away from it. Yeah, but now if he doesn't bury him. He's sold him, out. Nah, he's yeah, sold he out. gave him straight in. Yeah, no good. Yeah, he should have definitely been just shaving the one. And I mean, you could even take a chance at coming off the one and moving the one and coming behind the eight and nine with the cue ball and taking a chance. You're probably going to leave him too easy of a kick shot. But Right, right. But just not this shot. No yeah. matter what you did, just don't leave this shot. Yeah, the reason why it was so powerful is because the two four were right there to block the one up from all these rails. So yeah. now you've untangled them, the kind of. So. As a now, side note, Melling is on two fouls. Well, he's definitely, if he hits this hard and goes through it, he could scratch off the two. He's hit it pretty light, so and he was very aware of that. Yeah. That plays right into Melling's hand. He wants to be a shot maker. He wants to run, and uh, El Johnny... Messed up on the ball and hand safety thing just a little bit. Yeah, it was pretty crucial, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of funny here, though. I, I mean, he's almost got to, like, pull his ball towards going into the three, maybe. I don't think he has a real clean. I think he's really trying to thread the needle there. He may get away mm -hmm. with it, but if he tries to go three rails before the side, on the what would be the top side yeah. of the five, and then in between the six, seven, I don't see it. No. I like it's way too likely that yeah, it doesn't work out. Yeah, this is the out. shot I like. Just, oh, wow, he got too much on it. But I think that was the percentage play. Draw mm -hmm. your ball towards the three. If you bump it, if you go past it. He got a lot of draw on that ball. Now he's going to look for a three-ball combination maybe. If he can roll down past, that four, six, seven is a pretty easy shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the breakout's there too with the five. But the combination's a better play if you can get it. If, I'll tell you what, if you had ball in hand and you had the four, five, six, seven left, you're probably going to play the four, six, seven combination because it's it's easier to produce a shot for sure. He's going to try, he was trying to get to where he could shoot the five from about where the cue ball's at now. Right. And come to the bottom rail and kind of split those balls a little bit. And you and I both know that, that if you double kiss it, there's a lot of ways it doesn't come out with a shot. He is going to be able to draw two cushions to get the cue ball back where it's at now, very near it. He just took the di one rail. played with the distance, and uh, that's a little bit the difference sometimes. And I can't blame him there, just because he had a pretty sharp angle on the four. Mm -hmm. What happens here a lot of times too, depending on the speed, is you'll cut the six to the back rail coming across these two balls. When you hit the back rail, you you'll split the six seven, and the six seven will kind of be uh, the the six will get on the back rail, and the cue will go up. Oh, he missed it. Oh, he's pretty fortunate to miss it and not break him out either. John's attacking here, though. I'm about 100%. <laughs> he might even play position for the bank. Well, it is the final, and, you know, it's a slick table, so if he was just to roll this in and then play the three-rail safety on the six, I wouldn't blame him at all because this is the final. It's a race to nine. He's down, uh, well, it's, it's only one nothing, but every game counts so much. Well, that's what he's doing, too. I can tell by the way he's queuing up. 
Yeah. And he got a little short of perfect, yeah. though, I'll tell you that. Now he may have to go into the seven, just a, just a touch. I would have much preferred to be a little higher because then you can put the six down below the eight and nine. But now that's not available because he's too flat. Yeah, but don't be afraid to bump the seven a little bit to avoid double kissing the six. Oh, he doesn't want to make this. And he's gotten him so nicely on the seven that this is going to be very difficult. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if he if he hits it, if he comes across this ball with a little spin, meaning you want to aim it like the middle diamond mm -hmm. and spin with a little right into the ball, mm -hmm. then you may come across it and lay the cue ball down behind the eight and nine. Never know what might happen that All way. Right. This way, three rails, what he's looking at. Ooh. Well, I mean, it's four rails and, and, and top spin because you're over the seven. That warps the, long. Yeah, the cue ball is <laughs> going to bend. So you really have to stab downward on it, and you can't hit it hard. So he's basically going to be slow rolling this six in the side if he hits it well. Yeah, this is going to bend on him. I he's believe. not going to hit it. I no. just don't feel it. No, it bends. Not yeah. even close. Yeah, that's... Even though the one rail angle offers a, a scratch in the side very easily, yep. it offers a lot of hits that aren't a scratch. So you still have to attempt to go one rail across at it. Those are the instinctive percentages that you and I innately know from so much play. And if you come from a snooker background, you're not going to recognize that yet. Yeah. Just like a lot of games you have, uh, you come up with a shot and you're not in love with it, but you got to shoot it anyways. That's just how it is. And any time you're having to kick into a, a rail that's so close to the cue ball, that's whenever the judgment can, becomes very difficult because the rotation of the cue ball isn't what you're thinking because, you right. know, when you shoot other shots, the cue ball is either gaining speed or spin or it's dragging or it's doing a number right. of things before it gets to the object ball. So now you're kicking into a cue ball, a, a rail real close with the cue ball. It's very hard to judge. When you're when you're cueing over a ball, you get top spin on there, and as soon as it gets out there on the table where it slows down, that starts to curve too. Right, so, right. And it's real hard. It bends. And I really think John could end up with a little better position here, but he's just got to maintain. I think he just goes light and just goes ahead and rubs the nine ball with this shot rather than try to draw. No, he won't to... draw. He'll throw it a little bit with a little drag, I think. And go into the nine. Yeah, even yeah, if yeah. he avoids it, the left will bring him uh, away right. from it like that. Yeah. We hit cool. it thick, though. And the last one he missed was a little thick as well, so he's going to have to be aware of that. A little thick again. Woo. That's usually a sign of being tired. Uh, when the, when you're catching uh -huh. the thick, what happens is you're not quite putting as much on the ball as what you're aiming for. Meaning, you know, yeah. you're putting a touch of left and you don't quite put the speed on the swing and nothing really transfers from cue ball to object ball right. like you anticipate and you catch a little bit of a thick hit. So. Well, it's been nine long days and then we're, it's late in the evening. These guys have played so many tough battles today to get to this. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you got to be feeling a little bit, even if you're fit, like John Mora. And I'll tell you one thing: these guys pretty much both teed off their semifinal um, at the same time. I think Melling and S. I mean, uh, Mora and SVB started just a few minutes prior to to uh, Melling and uh, Dennis Orcuyo on the outer table, but. John sat around for a little bit, probably an hour before that other match finished, uh, that, that mm -hmm. the Dennis match. Mm -hmm. So could have got a little complacent. I was going to say before that nine ball was pocketed to take a two, uh, excuse me, to tie it up at one apiece that John's really become to where he's just playing rotation. He's got no weaknesses hardly. Right. No, right. He's one tough customer. Yeah, for a little bit it was. You might say a decision making every now and again and then for a little bit it was sometimes like uh making a crucial mistake or trying to play a little too perfect got him but now he's just he's just got it all together i mean he tries to play we all try to play perfect but he realizes it's, it's more about staying in rhythm and doing what you do uh, mm -hmm. more than playing perfect it's not a type of game that can be played perfectly very often no you know there was a uh, good break there by the way there was 
a movie called <laughs> The Legend of Bagger Vance, right. and it spoke about golf being a game that no one can master. You just kind of sometimes can hold it at bay for a little bit of time, and that's much the same as with pool. Sometimes, you know, like the you can look real dominant, and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah, yeah let you know that you're never going to master me. Well, I think it's the same with almost any game you look at, look at that, uh, that has survived any length of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Time will tell you that it's not a game. If any game that, is, you know, baseball, for whatever it is, you know, yeah. you can't be played. I mean, there's been a perfect game, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, you may look at the the hitters didn't play a very perfect game. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but, right. But just any game like that that, yep. that stands the test of time is usually that type of game. Anything truly great is mm -hmm. always hard. Right. Otherwise, it's not that great, and everybody would already be good at it. Yeah, they would have gone on. They figured out the Rubik's Cube, and it's still around a little bit, but it's not that, not that much. Mm -hmm. But back to the pool, I, I think he should elect not to try and make this and really trying to come across the three and lay the cue ball down behind the three, four, and bank the three up by the, is that the seven? Mm -hmm. I like that much better than trying to make this ball. That's For, why. Yeah. Great call. Great well, call. No matter what. It's, it, the right shot is the right shot. That was not the right shot. I'll tell you what, though. He, I, th I think he had a little intention on that, but it was so tough, especially at that soft speed and mm -hmm. any kind of – I think his cue ball would have been diving more towards that corner pocket if he had made it. So, But nevertheless, he did get the snooker and, and a tough one he got. Yeah. Three rails? Three rails is all he's got. A little short of three rails, I believe, is the shot. Right. Oh, I love that that spot yeah. where he's aiming right there. The only thing about that spot is nine ball. <laughs> exactly, and so he may have to actually hit this a little lighter and go a little longer. Because I think, believe it or not, a lot of people always consider that lighter makes it go longer. Mm -hmm. But if you hit it with a certain speed, it'll really grab and shorten on the third rail. Because the spin comes off from the yeah. ladder stroke. So. What about a one-pocket kick at the bottom one, rail? You know, I mean, just maybe two cushions and just try to ease up on it. He's trying to go in between the six and the eight. Yeah. And bend it. Well, he's unsure. Well, if I had any kind of route at just going at it at the bottom rail, even if I had to bend it, that mm -hmm. would be my route. Just because you got such a big ball. Even if I had to go on the what would be uh, the inside of the six, to the left side of the to the left of his six ball and bend it like he's doing. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. Wow, he did it softly. Oh, what, what a, a shot! shot. What wow. a shot! <laughs> he invented one there. He had to warp that angle. That was not even close to a natural angle. And again, though, watch how well he did it. As far as we'll get a replay at that, I'm sure. But he didn't overhit it either. That was a lot yeah. of control on a shot like that. Quality stroke for sure. Needs to come up with a second consecutive quality stroke, and he has. Oh, this is how Chris Milling arrives in the finals right here. What a fun guy he is, too. I've never seen him where he doesn't have a smile on his face. How can you not pull for a guy like that? You oh, know, yeah. just in life, he's just a happy-go-lucky. Great talent. He's funny, too. Cracks me up. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, if the break doesn't slow him down, I think he's going to be a tough guy to beat here tonight. Well, he's gotten a little funny there. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. Because of the eight and nine, that makes it a little bit tough to get to that corner. Well, these guys will go around that more often, though. They're so good at making sure they don't under hit or over hit this as far as don't go in the pocket. You know, it's, they're so good at that two rail shot. That's that snooker, whatever background, I guess you might call it. I know he played English eight ball more than snooker, but it's that type of hit. Well, I think it's the pure hit on the cue ball they get. They just hit it purer than a lot of people. It's not general. And then that constitutes more accurate pocketing, which allows you to judge those routes much cleaner. Right. Oh, boy. It's good on him. He's kind of I don't hands. know. He kind of decelerated into it, yeah, though. Yeah, he changed, kind of changed his mind, it seemed yeah. like, almost how he wanted to shoot it. Uh, I wouldn't blame the, uh, the shot there. I, I think he just missed one. 
And he's left him a little bit of a soft curve, so if he doesn't get the curve on it, oh, he doesn't have to curve it at all, never mind. He just got an easy rail first. Huh. Wow, I thought it was harder than that, but yeah. he made it look simple. Yeah, he was pretty close to the nine with the cue ball, too, so sometimes we get a little bit different angle. Right. He could definitely see it better than we can. But. Well, and we actually get the same angle, just a little different perspective on the angles, I guess you might call it. Anyway, Moore is gifted with a nine ball here. Or here. What was that ball? The eight ball. So two to one is our score. Okay. Like to see this shot by Chris Melling. And just an incredible, using a ton of draw and a lot of right English to bend the cue ball. You'll see the natural angle change. <laughs> wow. He hit it so good he almost followed it in. <laughs> yeah, he hit it great. I hate to see a, a great shot like that not finished by a completion of the rack, especially when he had an opportunity, but still, nevertheless, what a shot. We were talking about that commercial in golf where the guy says, these guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we have here. Yeah, I think, you know, we have a little... We're, from what we're used to, a little shortage of, uh, or in my opinion, a little shortage of top talent in the U.S. I mean, we got some world champions, don't get me wrong. We have, you know, arguably the best player in the world at rotation for the last however long. And a lot of it's not much of an argument, but as far as worldwide, uh, pool's pretty well represented as far mm -hmm. as the talent level. I mean, here's There's a just not a few countries that have a lot of great players. So. Exactly right. Oh, a couple nice kisses and bumps on the one ball. Mora has a shot. He is breaking great. Yeah, and he, that's the, the general vicinity when you're going that side rail break. You want it, When you're making the wing ball and other balls, you don't have to worry about making the one on the side. You want the one to come a couple rails, two or three rails around to the corner now. Speaking of bumps, Mark, uh, may have to get a little bump unless he wants to apply a lot of inside English. Uh, he's going to get a little bump on this six. I, I'm not that afraid of it because if you use a little bit of pace, it's rare that you're hooked between the two. You yeah. might not like your shot. Oh, oh he, he was got, able to. Oh, he was able to dodge it. Yeah, he was able to nullify that. Okay, great shot. And I think he got pretty ideal here uh, just to pretty much hold his ball. Um, just to maybe draw his ball back a couple inches. I don't think the nine's impeding the, the corner pocket at all for the two. Oh, was he looking like maybe it is a little bit, and he's got to cut this in the side. And that's why I thought that uh, initially that he would have to bump this six a little bit because I thought the two didn't go by the nine. So, he, mm -hmm. you know, if he put, he'd have to go back and forth. Yeah, it's the nice. same deal, that partial pocket that he messed up on in game number one. Uh, I think he doesn't want to take it on now. And he's going to apply a lot of inside, trying to avoid any collisions besides those two uh, top rails. Oh, and that's the problem. That's the problem with getting a collision. Hmm. He's not happy about it. We're going to get to see one here, though, whether it be a kick shot or a cross-corner bank. I don't think he can get at it, right? I think two cushions plays, you know, this should be a shot that you know, he should come close to. Like, I would feel confident I'm going to hit the five ball two cushions here. Yeah, the main thing about this is... You don't want to baby it, but don't rifle it and lose really your accuracy going the two cushions because you're going to be applying spin. So right. you know, off that second cushion, you want this ball to bend a little bit with the, with the left English. He's so, going too deep. It, no, you, I think on this table that's okay because he's not going to apply quite as much left. And if he doesn't kill it, he's okay. You're right. Yeah. Wow, great oh, effort there. Great effort, though. You hit the five and don't make it. Yeah, and the key okay. is, though, the kick, kick's tough anyways, and if mm -hmm. you apply a lot of speed, you really lose a lot of command on yeah. what's going on. So give it your best ever. And not only that, if he had caught it a hair thinner, he might not have even sold out anything and right. come down here with the right. cue ball. So. Yeah, that was the case. The pool players always say this. Ooh, I hit it too good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not sure how that works, but anyway. I'm not sure why he shot it that way. Well, 
This is the snooker way. Well, yeah. <laughs> I understand, but I, I guess he felt he wasn't going to lose it that far. But nerves are going. And knowing that, it was very easy to come out two rails for a little bit of an angle on the six, but so much closer. You and I know that. He does not yet. He just takes what he has and shoots him in, and then it all looks like a line drive yeah. in the box score tomorrow. Nobody says, you know, he didn't really play the position right on that shot. And he said, no, he ran out. He did something smart there looking like I, mm -hmm. he, he's going to – Draw back to an angle. I may go forward to an angle here. Just depending. Yeah. Something happened. Spooked him. Something in the crowd. I'm like you. I'd much rather roll ahead and then play this with top spin rather than try to muscle up and draw this back. Okay. He can obviously hold it and have an angle because there's no. I don't think there's any reason to to get to where you got to elevate. And he's got to elevate. So. No. He, I mean, you can look on the overhead here and see he doesn't have the right angle, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to pound it in. but Super firepower, but no, we'd rather roll that one in and just let it come off the rail. But anyway, there it is. Our match is tied two apiece. It's a pretty late hour, too. It's quarter to two in the morning. These guys have been battling since this morning. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping room service is still open after this, but <laughs> I, th I think I might be uh, out of luck. Yes. Yeah. Out of luck. We'll see. That's, we've had a few mistakes, and it's kind of like... Uh, you know these guys are going to play great, but it's kind of like just who's going to settle in first mm -hmm. and, and get the opportunities to settle in first. All right. Uh, many, many of our viewers or many people around pool, or just not really around pool, but that are you know play some pool. Maybe they're they're not hip about everything, but a race to nine is pretty short overall at this level. It doesn't take much uh, for things to get out of hand. Exactly. Uh, he was looking at the corner ball, and I'm not sure why, but he was looking at it from a different angle from the corner pocket, which is in interesting to me. <laughs> He's smiling, joking with the referee, Ricky Bryant. Oh, yeah. Chris, definitely, he wants, win or lose, he wants to have a good time doing whatever he's doing. But again, I wasn't in love with the way they're breaking. It's like the front two balls behind the uh, one are, have a gap between them or something. There's just not getting much of a very mm -hmm. consistent uh, opening. Well, there's six balls right down on the racking end that sometimes when you see Morris break, he's got six balls on the other end of the table. So. Yeah, he didn't got a six balls on the table. Period, so. <laughs> That's true, too. And really, this is probably going to cost him a game here. This one, eight, is definitely uh, he's a big favorite to make. Most likely, unless he underhits the cue ball a little bit, uh, he may not get position, but I think if he comes back out to the center of the table, he should be fine. Hard to believe the one would get in too bad of a place. He could slow roll it, but then he's kind of asking for a perfect hit on everything from the one to the eight. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. You could double kiss the one in. Oh, he's electing to play safe. But with the hanger there, you got to be confident that you get him. And even this, a lot of times that hanging ball that hurts you in the end. That being said, he got him covered. And he did a great job. And I really think that, not saying they're relying on it, but I really think that the no jump cue has a little play into some of these guys' heads as far as playing safety. They have they see a little more value in the safety now. Mm hmm And Chris needs to not, he's on a table he doesn't play on very often, so he needs to really don't get wrapped up and uh, he needs to feel his way through it a little bit, but don't get wrapped up in trying to do too much. Mm hmm. Well, we've already watched him make one incredible kick shot. He's trying to make a second one. Well, just any kind of hit on this one, though, you'll see if he comes across the top, he's got a chance of making the eight. If he, got, if he hits it naturally, like cutting the one towards the eight. Mm -hmm. He could hit behind it, maybe make the cue ball, uh, make the eight with the cue ball coming off the back of the one. 
but a good just any kind of and a solid contact might knock the one back around the table. Yeah, so. a lot of clutter down there to get tangled up in. Yeah, and that's why he was trying to do so much. That's what I was getting at. Don't get wrapped up into trying to hit it. Everything's so perfect right there. You really need to just create more of an accurate hit. Now, I may leave this 8-ball on the table rather than playing the 1-8 just because I may not get exactly where I want on the 2, and I can play the 3-8 from a long, a long distance mm -hmm. pretty easily. Good point. So... Good point. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the U.S. Open champion. Yeah. I'm telling you, a little nuance that he would be thinking about rather than just remove it. Maybe it might be useful later in the rack. Yeah, it's just, uh, oh, what a stroke. He's still going to fall on the rail, which is going to be a little bit of an issue, and he's a little bit off angle. So you're going to see him here elevate and really let a stroke out, I believe, drawing his cue ball back to the rail and out. I don't see really. And not only that, he doesn't have an entire pocket. Like if he tried to right. shove it to the low rail, right. a lot of times you want to hit the two to the upper side of the pocket. So I'm pretty sure you're going to see him let a stroke out here, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to elevate, drawing his ball. Oh, no, he's falling. Hmm. Hmm. It's got that quarter ball blocking his uh, access to seven ball just slightly in the way. And the fours impeding going forward a little bit. And the oh, nine. Oh, he okay. stunned it out of there. What a nice shot that I'll was. I'll tell you what. Yeah, a lot of people say, hey, you got lucky you hit the nine. Well, going in at that angle, not hitting the four, which was the first important thing. It was real hard to hit the nine and get snookered. Right. So. Now he's glad he has the eight ball there. Yeah, because he's <laughs> shooting this from long distance now. The only problem is he could easily make them both, so he's got to be a little conscious of that. But I would probably, rather than dead slow roll it, I would still probably take my chances I'm not going to make them both no, and come up to the head string with the cue ball probably or so. With the eight being that far out of the pocket, that's a rarity when that follows it in. A little bit missable on the top side of the eight, but you wouldn't figure. Like that. Oh, yeah. Rather miss it heavy than thin. And he missed it a little bit too thin. Melling now comes to the table. <laughs> He's well, I hate to say it, but I really see some fatigue in John Stroke a couple times this match. Uh, much different than it has been uh, not only the last the last match, but the last several months since he's got started back playing again. He's going to go three rails here. It's a pretty easy shot to fall in between the five and the six. Uh, I think, anyways, right? Mm hmm No, I... Uh, Top inside, he can overcut the three right. a long ways. And even though the three He's drawing it. Oh, even my though goodness. The, yeah, even though the three's close to the pocket, you still want to enter the pocket precisely. Mm, okay, he's drawing it. That he's was done a nice great shot. job. Yeah. He made that look easy, and that's not where the cue ball wanted to go mm -hmm. at all. And he can roll this for the five in the side or with that big pocket up in the corner, either one, so... No reason to come up above the five here in any kind of way. So I'll just, I'll just kind of ease this in. Probably playing for the five in the side. Wow, he came above. What's he doing? <laughs> What's he going? What's he doing? <laughs> Why didn't he roll it in? Yeah, some of the, I told you some of his position routes a little suspect, but he was he trying to for bump it? it? Or did it just go off in his hand? Maybe now he's got to bury him behind the seven. There's no reason to go off at a dumb cut shot here. Just. Just bank the five up behind the nine on the center of the table and just float the cue ball right through behind the seven, right? Uh, is that right? <laughs> it is right, but that's not Chris Melling's game. Well, no, I'm not saying it's not his game, but I don't, I don't like to play safe either, but I think he's flirting with going into the seven in a bad way here. Oh, wow, what a shot. Never mind. Yeah, he just overcomes it with firepower. Well, that's where, like, right there, a lot of us was, it doesn't matter with the eight right now, but a lot of us would have drugged that ball in and fell over on the right side rail left side rail if you're looking at your screen to where you can naturally come around the table like this but
Takes a moment to check his position line to the nine. Wants to keep all tracking one rail right at the nine ball all the way. You know, and I really think the way nine balls evolved the last probably 10, 10 years or so, mm -hmm. somewhere around there, that execution overcomes the information a lot. So as far as, or at least the experience. I don't think you can replace experience, that's for sure. And I think it shows up in a certain amount of events, but overall as a whole, seems yeah. like to me execution really gets the money. Meaning you can make a little bit of a bad decision uh, if you're executing very well. Right. As witnessed here, I mean, Jason Shaw is another one that has a very loose game, but he just overcomes it. Sometimes it catches him, but a lot of times he creates runouts where other people wouldn't even think about trying to run out right. or couldn't run out. So he loses some games by being a hair careless, but he definitely creates enough opportunities for himself out of nothing that more than makes up for the deficit. And if he ever put it all together, had a Dennis or a cool approach with his firepower, then that would truly be the pool machine. All right, we'll see if he, he's not changed his break again. And yeah, I, he needs to move the cue ball. I think he's he, broke dry twice. Yeah, uh, he cannot so. afford to break dry in or this Or three match. times. No. Uh, he won the lag, right? Or no, John won the lag, excuse me. So, yeah, he's broke dry both times. He's broke, so we'll see. Again, just a little bit better movement, and he's going to make the one ball. But it's... Uh, Nothing going right in, which is that's concerning when you see your opponent just pounding balls in. Yeah. The weird thing is whenever, you know, I started playing and a lot of when I played pro pro tournaments around the world, it, it wasn't as, I mean, it's concerning, but it's not as concerning. To, it wasn't as concerning to us as it is was now. It is to people no, now. 100%. You know, so. The evolution of the game. Yeah. I'm surprised. Is he looking at a combination and then putting him behind the five? I think it's mainly just putting behind the five. Okay. Well, I thought he may look at cutting this ball down in the other corner. Um, <laughs> No. He, he's thinking it's a free three ball combination to win and pin well, the cue well, ball. This but isn't the easiest ball no. to pin on the side rail here. Not at all. Easily sell out. He hit it perfect, though. And, Ooh, and he really moved the two up in a good place. So yeah. John's got his hands full. This is how I say it a crippling blow. <laughs> 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 this was an MMA fight. They may stop it on this rack. I'll tell you, he may have to kick <laughs> two rails. No, <laughs> maybe even one rail in between the three six to the end rail in between the three six straight at the two. No, like jacked up over the five. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's tough, but Whew. is it ever? Yeah, how's it? He he's got a kick on the right side of the side here with a lot of spin. Yeah, he's going Z. He's gonna go side rail, side rail. Try to drop down. That's why he's using left English, because that really opens it up off the second rail. Well, doing this, he can aim further away from the side than he thinks he can. Yeah. And at least it's going to make him run out. And there's a five ball in a particular place that's not so easy. <clears throat> so half the work done, I would think, as far as at least not giving up the game on a 2-9 combination. Yeah. And the 9 made it a little funny to get on the 7. That may help down the road. Yeah. Seven to the eight, not that easy. No, it's going to be probably short side playing on the on the eight if he gets proper on the seven. So we'll see how he plays it. I would pull up into the center of the table, I'm, or just straight in. There you go. You don't want to fall behind this first ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you're at least above it or straight in. Some people, you know, they, they're lazy with ball in hand because they presume that it's easy and then they regret it, you know, later on after they ran one ball with ball in hand or something. Yeah, and it's just like the the progression of getting better. You'll see a lot of players, they don't quite get as uh, as better as quickly as because they how much they take uh, the last three balls for granted. Like I'll see people improve to where, oh, I run, you know, they'll run the mm -hmm. first four or five a lot of times and they really just get a little... Mm -hmm. A little like, oh, it's, the toughest part is over. Self-included sometimes, you know. I get yep. to where I'm not paying atten 
yep. attention to the last few balls. A little more detail than I should, and it cost me. I'm not sure if Chris was trying to develop the five ball off the rail that last shot. It looked like he might have been. Maybe. He's not afraid to let a stroke out and hit one, that's for sure. I wouldn't have blamed him because if he could have moved that five right in front of the side pocket, the rest of this getting on the seven would have really made it a little bit easier. I mean, he's getting a little angle on the six. Okay, he's looking pretty comfortable right there. Yes, he is. And he can come across this to the other side of the side pocket, which is nice here. He doesn't have to. In fact, he probably doesn't want to, actually, because he needs to play short side on the eight, probably. So you want to be a little longer away from it. That way you go through the seven a little bit more and get a little longer coming around the table. When you're a little closer to it, you don't gain quite so much momentum with the cue ball, and right. it glances a little more. Subtle point that you make. Okay, He's he, going right at the side pocket. That, I can't there believe how bad that line he just had on that ball was. Wow, uh, that's amazing that he would even come close to that. I mean, you hit that with the other ball with the inside to come at least a diamond away from the side pocket, right? Yep. Yeah. Whatever. The side pocket's been there for eternity, and he knows that you can't just let that happen. You have to take it out by a diamond, either a diamond long or a diamond short. And that way, if you crudely hit the pocket, the side pocket is yeah, still not in play. Exactly. You can't just try to go speed on that one and just say, well, I won't get there. Wow, well, a couple of big mistakes here. That well, was a big one for sure. Well, now, is John trying to go four rails here into the other side of the eight? I think that's a mistake. I think you're relying on the table a little too much, but it's not a bad mistake or anything. He'll probably still do it, but he could get to the top of the eight that way, like land on top of the eight. Ooh, and that too. He, he almost came too tight and caught that point. So I think maybe a hair, hair unnecessary, but nevertheless, uh, he's going to get out. That yeah, was a good shot after all. One good thing he did like about that pattern from the seven to the eight, he could let his stroke out a little bit. There was no timid stroke mm, at all. Not so. at all. Now, 3-3 three, three is our score. They've been trading some errors, but uh, due to the late hour, can't blame them. Mora has requested a short player timeout. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back uh, off our player timeout. I believe we're tied at three games apiece with John Moore breaking. I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by Mark Wilson. Otherwise known as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, but sometimes <laughs> Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two in the morning. Yeah. That's why you got to be fit to be up here with us. That's right. Jeremy. Well, so. that and them stairs. <laughs> the stairs. Them stairs are brutal. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I don't mind a flight or two of stairs. That don't bother me, but... I'll tell you what, if uh, if you're in Chris Melling's corner, I'm surprised he's letting him touch the one right there. I don't think you're, unless he's just like seeing if he can get it for this period, but a lot of times they won't let you touch the one after you, like, yeah, then that's not too allowed there usually. But there are different rules for different tournaments. But uh, anyways, if you're a Chris Melling fan, I'd be a little concerned that not only a mistake or two, but that's one thing, and I think we're going to see a few just because it is late at night, but John's breaking the balls, I think, way better. And, uh, mm -hmm. and not just you know, maybe getting a little bit better rack, more consistent rack, but just hitting the break a little better. Yeah. Yep. Uh, completely agree. Big edge there. You know, when you look at the scouting report, uh, I had Mora as a way better breaker. I have Melling as a little better shot maker. Oh, but that's when, hard to say, huh? Well, <laughs> about but, John, I mean, just right. John so, so, he shoots so straight. So. But when it comes to tactics and uh, kicking and uh, safety play, I had a certain little decision favor, making, maybe, yeah. Favor more there, just out of experience. Yeah, well, that's, we commented on it earlier that John really has become a player that just has no weaknesses, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. You know, and and. He probably maybe is missing a little bit more. Uh, he's been in such big moments. So, I mean, he's played in China a lot. He's played in Japan a lot. Uh, obviously, all over Canada and the U.S. and many places. So, 
I look for him to get in the limelight a little more as far as the mm -hmm. finals coming up in the next few years. Three ball went yeah, in. And the one tracking. That's uh, he keeps getting a bad unlucky kiss. Oh no, he can make it, and he's not going to pass on this. I don't think. And may offer an angle. He can get at that one, right? Mm-hmm. Looks like it. And it may offer an angle where he's got to come two rails right at the two ball. Uh, that's okay. I don't think he can throw afford to throw it in and try and hold any kind of way for the two. Like he needs to just naturally cut it. Is he gonna try and wrap, hit this hard and wrap the corner and get the low I, side of the two? Uh, I don't think so. I think he should roll like it. He, yeah, well, it looks like he's winding up. Yeah, it does. What a great shot, man! What a great shot. Getting Very up for clean. the two in the corner or the two or the combo, but I'm sure he was trying to get for the corner. And great shot there. I think it still plays better in the corner too. Oh, I do too. Six balls awkward. Well, and it goes, uh, you're going the wrong way with the cue ball for where the two's going. So you don't have them both yeah. going together. So he's just got to bear down, make another, one more great shot to really open this rack. Probably want to pinch this cue ball back a little underneath the four to make it easy to come out for the five on the side. Great shot. Yeah. If Moore looks a little bit refreshed from that player timeout, and I think that was a good idea. You don't want to get into the fog of war here and then just kind of go through the motions. Yeah, and don't feel like, uh, you know, he's going to make mistakes. I can make mis I can afford a mistake or two. That's not John's mentality. John's no. mentality is, you know. Play every shot perfect. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, is, is he pulling this? Uh, he should just play more of a natural angle. It's very easy to get to the six, even if you get a little bit behind the five. That's why I, you don't want to flirt with getting, like, if he under hit that it, mm -hmm. or bumped it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he became very close to that ball yeah. just to get a little bit, like, ideal when ideal wasn't very necessary. Yeah. So, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I think our job is a little bit of devil's advocate. But, but if he had come across and pulled that a little too much and bumped that five down, he could have easily sat on maybe a bank or a combination. So... Yeah, things are looking pretty promising here for this break. After that good opening shot on the one, then he followed it up with a nice long four ball in the corner. Now he can easily chip to seven in. Doesn't want to put a whole lot of English on this, though. This ball spread a little more on this table than it will on the other ones. Like, the side pocket's a little more involved. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't need to do much. Just two cushions, side rail, side rail. He doesn't have to do anything, really. Just just don't apply too much right, is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm just, just a, a hair, yeah. Great shot. Perfect. Stand, yeah, standing a good diamond uh, way. I've noticed he plays quite well left-handed. He did it oh, on the 5x10 yeah. the other day quite a bit. Nice break and run out after his player timeout. Morin now leads 4-3 and further uh, punishes the scratch in the side by Chris Melling when the cue ball got away with no apparent reason. Old Snowball will find the hole if you turn her loose. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing what the cue ball does. Uh. It's weird, too. It seems like the better the player you are, to, if you turn it loose a little bit, the more you get punished sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. So. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised, I, surprised as far as touching the one there with his hand. I'm, 
I don't think he's trying to do anything other than freeze it, but there have been accusations mm -hmm. of players that are trying to manufacture a little bit more of a guarantee on making a ball by adjusting the one somehow with their finger. So. Mm -hmm. Moore goes back to his favorite spot. That's the seven ball on the wing. Jeremy's pointed out that the one ball comes around three rails and uh, sometimes has been getting a kiss down here by the corner pocket where he's breaking from. And he's made it in the side a couple of times when he glanced the one a little more. Uh, didn't get the fuller hit on the one. But he, uh, look at that cue ball. Oh, two, three ki kisses, but still it's going to be pretty nice, it looks like, oh. and the two is okay. Excellent. But you'll notice Chris is breaking from the same side, so... Not only is he not quite hitting hitting them as well, I don't think he's hitting them horrible, but he's obviously not getting the same rack, uh, mm -hmm. pr producing the same rack, and, and just by not hitting them as well either, he's not getting near the results. So. All right. Here's five balls and then past the side pocket, four, you know, behind the head string. Chris had six balls down by the other end rail, you know, so the further mm -hmm. they travel, the more pocket openings they go by, the greater the mathematical likelihood that you do make multiple balls. Yeah, and you, uh, you're just getting more of a consistent pattern in the way the balls are reacting as well. So, didn't want to take too much chance here now. Okay, that was a little risky, and we'll see if he figures out why that was so important to do. I guess he just didn't want to get a little too thin on the two by just pulling over over a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. And maybe a little elevated over the four as well, maybe something like that. Well, the other thing is getting on the four will be easier if he can get the real good angle well, on this. For the three so, in the side. Or, or even if he had to go to the corner. Because if you get off angle on that three in the corner, now it gets hard to get to that little zone over there where you well, put yeah. the four clean maybe. Yeah, he's definitely ideal as far as... He should be able to just pinch it back a little bit for the three in the side and being able to go straight forward for the four in the, the uh, upper left-hand corner if you're looking at your screen. This looks like perfect. He yeah, had a nice stroke there. Wasn't effective backspin, but he kind of stunned backspin. Yeah, it looked like he was a little worried about something the way he struck it, but... Nevertheless, it looks like he's perfect to me. Like, he can get past the six, no problem with the cue mm -hmm. ball. He doesn't have to put too much on it to go forward as far right. as it's not much of a cut at all. So Once he clears the six, he's all good. He doesn't need to get any closer. Just get away from, so you don't have to cue over the six. No, just, this is just... Yeah. yeah. Nice. Besides being on the rail, but... But so even now, that's, yeah, the, that's part of it. Better it's all be, hangers here. Better so. being on the rail than over the six or something like that. So, Just come out past the six a little bit or, or two straight in, something like that. Doesn't want to fall too behind it a bunch. <coughs> now just pull it out a little bit and have a natural angle to come up. What would be probably three rails around from the eight to the nine. Mm hmm. Main thing is here, just leave it to where you can reach it easily. So. He went and measured where he wanted to be. So that's one thing. He really visualizes his result. He's going to a spot on the table, not just around that area. One thing I like about watching John is, you know, when I teach people or help people or even thinking about myself, I'm always trying to get something I can repeat. And John, you look at him when he gets down on the ball and everything. I'm just, man, he's he's as close to repeating his stance and everything as much as anybody in the game. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. Without being uh, too mechanical either, like you know, still keeping uh, mm -hmm. some personality in the swing and some rhythm in the swing. So, and John Moore continues to punish the unforced error by Chris Melling. 
Now he's two games in front, 5-3. That's how fast these matches tip around, you know. You just cannot take anything for granted. You don't have to get another turn. We saw more put a flurry on in his uh, last match here. Capable of stringing racks together, as he's proving right now. Well, if I was on the Mellon camp, I would want Chris to adjust sides of the table to break from. But if I was on the Mora camp, I would not want him to do anything different. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing as far as getting to play that match earlier. How the table's racking and breaking, that's huge. I think after these last couple, I think Chris is probably feeling like, all right, he has to make no more mistakes as far as any opportunity he gets. I'm not saying he has to break and run every rack, but. Yeah, no one forced errors. Yeah, none at all. It's just going to be that type of match for him to win this event if I'm getting that feeling anyways. Now watch this one ball. It should jump just past the side pocket with the seven ball on the wing going in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Double J has forecast it, and it's gone exactly yeah. the way he said. Look at this. Well, I'll tell you how consistent he's hitting them. Did you see how the two just came down and banged the nine again, three rails? Exactly what happened yeah. to out of the last three breaks. So, John, he's, uh, I've seen him shoot. He's gonna. He may go in between the three, four right here. I've seen that kind of shot from him before. Oh, I'm not fond of that. Well, just with top end. I mean, I understand you can shoot it with inside as well. But which ball's more missable? Uh, right. You know what I mean? Right. Like if it's natural to go in between the three, four, he's probably going to put the inside English. And I understand it's a little risky going the other way, but I've seen him not put the inside on it before and go in between on a small, small path. be nice to break them apart, but... It's just too risky, I think. Well, I think, uh, I don't, uh, you're saying a three doesn't pass? Yeah, uh, well, I didn't think it did, put it that way. <laughs> well, I think you're probably right. So he he's going to have to let his stroke out here, coming three rails, going for the three in the side. Mm-hmm. Maura showed us the four rail position earlier. That it's almost laying just about like that, where you drop off that last side rail into the end rail, let it release from the end rail at the side pocket or corner pocket, either one. Okay, he doesn't want to go too long, get over top of the eight somehow or something like that. So, or land on the back rail. That's going to, he's going to use the back rail now. Yeah, that's that four cushion position and then yeah. just let it release. Mm -hmm. That was a nice shot. That's the second time in the match this, that shot came up too. Last yeah. time it came very near the side pocket. What a nice series of balls he's put together here. Yeah, I wonder if he's a hair off angle here. If he's a hair off angle, don't try and get cute and pound it in or hold it. You can play the 4-8 very easily. Okay, he had plenty of angle. Mm -hmm. But you make a good point. You don't have to. The, whatever you do, just don't miss the ball. Right. <laughs> you can make the 4 into something somewhere, somehow, from anywhere. And he's, he's really taking full command after a couple of early mistakes in the first few games. Um, really, and then a big mistake by Chris Milling on a scratch. And it's a little short there. And that's getting a little more angle, too. So he's going to have to get through this five not to mess with that nine and come straight back up the table. Yeah. He's got his good momentum, his good rhythm. It doesn't even seem to affect him whatsoever. He feels totally confident he's going to succeed. Well, watch how, how smooth he is. I mean, he'll still make an aggressive strike, but he won't kill it. He really put the nice top English revolutions on the cue ball. Very straight. Oh, back he's going swing. around it. Okay, nice shot. And that's the case of he, he could feel the angle. We can't. Right. It, it was subtle, you know, but it was there. It was very natural for him. <clears throat> 
Yeah, he recognizes this is a little treacherous. Yeah, without really mm -hmm. trying to shoot the six, kind of with a lot of draw, trying to get to the back right. rail, which is something you don't want to do either. So, hmm. well, let me just take a look here. Yeah, this is this is tricky. Now the eight's deep. So just you would think he could just knock the six in and hit the right side of the eight easily and come back down table, but he's going to have a little bit of a flat angle on the eight. Yeah, so he, he could hit the point and really kind of go towards the side rail. So now he's going to draw back, I think. Yeah, I do too. I think he's going to work the cue ball much closer, maybe all the way to the end rail. Great shot. Yeah. Now he can draw out of there if yeah, he doesn't like it. Much easier. Looks like he can go rail first on this one, okay, too. Yeah, I think he can even go ball first if he wanted. Well, it is pretty deep, though. He's going rail first. Rail first just gives you all kinds of acceleration on the cue ball to get down there. You don't have to hit it very hard at all. Yeah. Gorgeous shot. Nice shot and good call, Mark. And it's starting to look like Chris is going to need John to have some misfortune to get back in this match. I'm not saying that six to three is any kind of insurmountable lead, but problem is more is playing so well. <laughs> right. He's not well, much like I said on the floor. He, he doesn't beat himself. You might play a superhuman match on him, but he's not gonna give it to you. No, and he had a couple early mistakes and then just you know, just since mm -hmm. Chris's last mistake and Chris had a couple total uh, exactly. not, not any more i would say than than john has opened up the match with but he's really taking advantage of it in the break we could see what the break has created as far as opportunities yeah yeah that's four in a row now yeah you can see the first uh melling went in the first three out of five and went in the first game in the fourth and fifth with with Mora taking the second and third but now I think rack six is where the cue ball dunked into the side. That's right, and he, he hasn't got shot that. since. And then the broken ran three, and it's still operating. Yeah, this is a world-class pool, and that's what happens. I mean, these guys can put a hurting on you for an unforced air, which is exactly what I consider going straight in the side pocket an unforced air. You're going to make some errors anyway, but that that's one that's... Uh, Pretty much unforgivable at this level. Yeah, it's like missing certain balls, really, to be honest with you. Certain level, there's certain... You, you would think any ball's missable, right? But you just kind of tell yourself... You would like to be able to tell yourself, I should never miss that ball, that's right. for sure. Well, here we go. Three balls, the wing ball. Like you've had the one ball just past the side pocket, come around for position, pretty regular. Yeah. You track that, same yeah, thing. A little more of the point, so it didn't catch that second rail uh, quite like you thought, but <laughs> still. The, the one, two, and three are gone. The four is by the pocket. Five going to go in the side pocket pretty easily. Yeah, and that'll make it easy to get on the six. The six to the seven is really the only, uh, <laughs> yeah. what you might say, a little above average as far as difficulty uh, coming across. And it's still not super difficult. Not at all. No, it, the way they're laying here, I mean, he's already ran out much tougher layouts than this. He was having to play four cushion positions a couple times. This is just going to be roll and get on angle. Nice speed control there. Now he can do whatever he wants angle-wise. Yeah, whether he wants to get to where he can pull it past the side or just stay above the side, I'd probably stay above it however I want to play it just because yeah. he's playing so good. I mean, uh, there's no reason to try and get a foot closer to what would might be the seven ball here in a moment just to, uh, yeah. j just to make the shot a hair easier. He's not missing, so... Well, I always phrase it like this. There's perfect position and there's proper position. Proper position says you stay conservative on the high side. Make the seven ball. If you're afraid to make the seven ball from uh, across the side pocket, you're not going to win this tournament anyway. Well, you a know? lot of people don't realize how much better of a pool player it makes you whenever you start playing that way because you accept it. A little bit longer shot as far as now your ball pocketing becomes a lot better, but you just stay in line more. You get to play more natural pool. Sounds like something you and Kevin Trudeau should do. Natural pool. 
Okay, he's gotten a little bit of angle here, but again, it's, he's hitting the ball so well, I think he'll be able to beat hitting the nine with the cue ball. I don't right. think he'll have any problems. For me, a little high right, two cushions, and then once it releases from that rail, either way, however we get there, I would, I would like to work the cue ball that way, but. Yeah, he's not going to kill it with inside. He'll go natural. Just a hair, hair right, or even straight. Gorgeous. Yeah, because the nine Gorgeous. is so accessible. That's yep. the thing. Now, you got the worst possible place. He's perfectly straight, but you know what? I just stopped the cue ball right there. Absolutely. And unless I don't see him doing anything else, really, to be honest with you, the nine's a pretty much a chip shot. Uh, if if you have a hint of an angle, which you, he can see and we can't, still, you can top spin. I, I still wouldn't top spin. I don't. I, like, if you top spin, right, becomes mm -hmm. a little missable first off, and especially with not much angle because you're always worried about just, like, something happening and you're going in the pocket. But also, falling on the side rail is a much tougher shot uh, than shooting it from where he's at right here. Now, it looks like he's True let draw that. it. Oh, he had a better angle than we thought. Yeah. He got into that cue ball really nice. And it was that, that same stroke we talked about earlier where the tip stays on the cue ball, that little millisecond longer. Oh, absolutely. He did it all with control and accuracy. Nice follow through. Wow. Four in a row. John Mora, man on a mission here. 7-3 is our score. Meanwhile, Chris Melling's cue has now mildewed from lack of use. Well. It's been a, quite a while. It's been a good half hour since he's been to the table. Oh, yeah. John Moore going for two out of three uh, championships here and winning the bank pool. I think that was about 2012. I could, if I could see the banners here, can't quite see far enough down the banner to see what year that was with John. It's right here. Maybe you can see it, Mark. Well. It's all the way down to 2009, 10, 11. I can't. It was either. Hmm. I think it was maybe even. 2000, yeah, 2011 or 12. I think it was 12. He beat, I believe, Shane Van Boning in the finals, if I remember correctly. Yeah, nobody takes him lightly today. When you draw him, it's not, uh, you know you're in for a battle. And really put on an exhibition uh, as far as the break here. Not only the playing, but the break. One th and people can say, well, the wing ball is going in every time. Well, maybe so, but he's hitting them well enough to make the one come around for a position some, and sometimes making the one, but he's making three a lot of times, not just the wing ball. Oh, he lost him a little bit on the wrong side that time. It's not going to cost him, but never want that cue ball flying the opposite side that you're yeah. breaking from. Uh, it's a little bit more of a glancing blow. Mm be called a Brooklyn and bowling and right. in pool it takes away some what you have now he's got to make a decision he's got to go with inside English I don't think he can afford to go mm -hmm. in between the five six or anything back and forth he'd just like to go two cushions across and stay right on the head string and just get back to the head spot would be ideal yeah but or maybe even a little beyond he could even get a little straighter than that this angle's it's that it's that angle to where it's not quite fat enough, it's not quite thin enough. It's easy to make it deflect and catch the six right here going across because you're trying to put a little speed on it. So All right, you see how he overcut the yeah. one extremely to the other side of the pocket? That was to make sure he didn't catch that six ball. Nice shot. Such a nice pace to his game. He takes his time here because he knows this is a super important shot to follow up with. No letdown. Yeah, it's just to put him on the heel and uh, getting to break the balls again. And I'll tell you what I like about John since I've seen him come back. He's a hair quicker than he used to be. And, I, you know, it's not like he's, mm -hmm. you know, he was a little slower before, a little too slow in my opinion. And a lot of people might say, well, Jeremy, people consider you a slow player. Well... I had to use powder now much faster since I started using the glove, but I like his rhythm is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Overall, everything, it seems like he's he's never getting uh, out of his comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah, he plays his pace. 
nothing for granted. You know, if Jason Shaw would already be shooting the five ball by now, but he will get off angle and then have to rely on firepower. John doesn't make himself work that hard. He works really hard on the routine shots so that he doesn't have to come up with tough shots down the road. Despite the fact he's capable of making them, he just doesn't want to expose himself to the risk. He wants to do it the right way. He's a perfectionist. You can see it in his attire, his approach. And he, do you hear where he's got to pound this a little bit? or can he? I just, think he's got to stun it a little bit. Okay, I was going to say he could, could just roll forward, I thought, right. maybe. But right, I agree. He's still okay. The nine's very accessible. Now, if the nine was a little on the bottom row or something, this may be a little different getting from the five to the six to the nine. But yeah. here now, just don't make sure you don't under hit it and make sure you get to the ball. Or is he going into it? I think he might be because he's got That's top okay. spin on there, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, he's so close to it. I almost prefer that over yeah. uh, drawing over and trying to play a thinner cut in the side. No, it makes it, makes it so much easier to play. Somebody might not have watched much pool to tune into this, what John's been doing, and just say, so that's how pool's played. Yeah, right, really. right. Or nine ball, anyways. And who the heck is he playing? Nobody? Right. <laughs> you know, this to get on the hill. Pushes TPA up to 885 here all at once. Yeah, and really about a thousand since it was three to two, and we had a scratch by Chris Milling. Uh, it's, it has been a thousand. Chris yeah. hasn't gotten back to the table, so you'll you'll see that, that John did John didn't start off with a couple of mistakes. Six in a row now, Chris. I mean, uh, John Mora. Ooh, very very consistent. It all starts with his break, and this is somebody that practices a break a lot because it doesn't look like this if you don't. Oh, absolutely. He's Anytime you can unleash, meaning you can really hit with a lot of swing speed and hit so accurately, it's going to be something that you, you're mm -hmm. putting a lot of spending a lot of time on, that's for sure. Now, Melling needs to stay prepared for a turn. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. You, you know, you know, more is playing good. Don't worry about that. You got to worry about your inning and hope that it comes. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I'd like to see him get it. I mean, I want to see Chris. I mean, I want to see John always, always end it. You know, you always want to see a guy end with six, seven racks. That's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But I want to see just if Chris, if he gets a hair more aggressive than he already is, if he does get a turn, if, mm -hmm. if he has to try and create something, meaning come with a, one heck of a shot. And if, if that's the case, we might see something we haven't seen before, mm -hmm. which would be fun. Absolutely. I like to see it more from a test of uh, who is this person. Do you know, right, they right, quit? Right. Do they give up? Do they just go through the motions, or do they put their heart into it? Well, getting here to the finals, I'd have to say he doesn't give up. Yeah, yeah, you that's my guess anyway. Tested along the way. Look at that good break. He may want to give up after he sees the layout here on this table. But, oh boy! Well, he's got one tough shot, and then he's got a five. He's got to deal with. Uh, but yeah. other than that. He's just got to float this in and play on the short side of the, t not the short side, but the, the little small gap between the side pocket and the two for position. So just a hair right English on it, maybe coming across. Yeah, it, you know. Could draw it, but I mean, I don't think he has to do that. Just chip it in with top right. If he drew it, he could draw it like back towards the five. But I, I would even, if I was going to draw it, I would bump the five. I would try Yeah, to... I don't like the draw. That's why I think yeah. I'm just rolling it in with just a touch of right English. I, your yield will be long-term higher, not going at the five. Great shot. Is he going to get the friendly bump he needs here? Oh, oh darn it. I think he can make it, though. Ah, it's real thin. I can tell I from where I'm sitting. Oh, boy. No, the cue ball have to go about 100 miles an hour. It's super thin. That's okay. Those are straight back and forth. You can draw it. And make it. Okay. I think, well, I think it's doable, this shot. I, I really do. And if it is any kind of doable, John will shoot at it, I think. But you want to hit down on the ball a little bit. That way the ball doesn't pull quite as much. You hit up on the ball, it's very easy to hit this heavy, meaning into the bottom rail, because you get a little more pull factor, I think, when you hit up on the ball. Oh, you were hit, right. He hit it great. You were right. Is he going to get... Oh, oh don't do wow. it. Uh, 
that's unfortunate. <laughs> After such a good shot, he couldn't give him a little bit of a break. But anyway, maybe we get to see Chris Melling after all. Uh, he's got a nice chance to play safe. It's one he needs to execute. He needs to lay the cue ball down just right about where the middle diamond is and let the chip to spin the forward to the rail a little bit. So maybe just an inch or two higher of the middle diamond about where he's standing. We'll see. Don't think he's going all the way around the table here. Yeah, like so. They need to hit it more, though. That's right. a little short. It is, but it's not a bank. It's not an offensive shot. <laughs> no, and he's got a little bit to work with as far as the five really only has one pocket. Uh, so, yeah. uh, you know, you can toy with the four a little more in these positions. <laughs> Chris is still laughing, still smiling. Yeah, well, he I, I couldn't, I didn't have the angle to see. He went over and he made some gesture towards, uh, towards John in the manner of great shooting, pal. So. There really was. Well, he's not looking at kicking at this, is he? He, <laughs> he can is. see the four. I uh, know. He's tired of waiting. No, he no. He's he's judging. He can't. He doesn't realize he can see this. Why would you ever kick at this? You can't even get position on the five. Huh. Well, I'm gonna have to ask him about this one. Yeah. And this is what I was talking about, I guess, as far as getting uber aggressive in a situation when you're down eight to three, but he can see the ball. <laughs> and the five doesn't even pass. If he makes This is this, amazing. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. I to, think he's thinking that he can kick in behind the five and get action on the nine with a cue ball or something. I mean He's kicking at the four. I know that. I'm saying if he was to make it. He could see it. <laughs> they made a good pass at it. Wow, I, I'm still going to have to ask him about that, Mark. I didn't get that one. Okay, and this is where you can play a little different because of the five ball. If you're in a funny spot and you're a little worried about selling out, trying to do too much, just roll across the four and go the end rail. Maybe you'll go by the uh, seven and the four will come up, you'll use the seven. But if not, you leave him frozen on the end rail and he, he can't get back. He's got to make a tough shot, and he can't get back like that, okay? But you want a little thicker hit or a little more hit to get the snooker. I think it's okay. Maybe I'm wrong. It was a nice but idea. I, yeah, I, I would have liked to play to the hair thicker and just laid him on the rail a little more. I think you could have maybe got the four out a little more. Mm -hmm. He was trying to run it safe more than play more of the hit but still nevertheless they had a little more to work with because yeah. because the five's in a little more difficult situation <clears throat> oh here's this aggression and we're talking about again is he gonna try and cut this so this <clears throat> the seven did get introduced if he's looking at playing in the corner yeah well he could get a kiss here as well i think i think he could easily get a double kiss on this four ball coming off the back rail i think yeah just Ugh. like that so he had it looking pretty nice. Yeah, but if the kiss is laying there, it's very hard to avoid, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is difficult as well, uh, whether he wants to knock it in cross side and draw his ball for the 5-9 combination, which is long distance. He could roll up on the eight very easily and play a pretty easy snooker here. I think that's a better shot. You know, Chris wants to shoot at something anyway. You know, I mean, maybe let him dig in and make a mistake. Yeah, you'd certainly like to be able to get position on the five more than have to play a long five-nine combination, I would think, especially having to bury a cross bank to do it. Now you may end up, yeah, he was just going to knock the combination in. That's what he had decided, which I'm sure he would have if he had gotten a shot on it, so... Hard to bet against John in that spot. If he doesn't cut at this ball after he kicked at the four a minute ago, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. <laughs> yes. All of a sudden you went conservative. Yeah, this is why I wanted to see him get another shot so he could he can make some amazing shots here. Well, he's thinking about kicking the four in the side. He 
he likes to try and do this. Like he likes to try and kick the four and bring the cue ball up behind the five as well. well. What happens in this type of shot is sometimes it works out perfect, but usually it gets away from me one way or another, either the object ball or the cue ball. Oh, uh, what a shot. Meanwhile, what it a perfect. Shot. <laughs> uh, okay, now we get to see the big dog eat here a little bit. Oh, yeah, he may. Um, should get out here, of course. Well, let's go a little bit more. Yeah, we know he's going to shoot at this point. And looks to, to looks to be that we're going to see more pool. That's for sure. Ooh, <laughs> golly! <laughs> uh. Scared me. Yeah, he rattled that one home. Well, no, just the fact that he just rifled it in. Oh, yeah. I thought he was just going to roll it in and go one row right. out and shoot the eight from a little, you know. From our vantage point, you can see it going back and forth in the side pockets as it fell. Well, good to see. Melly yeah. made something happen here. Nice He's, kick into the side. He sure did. He just needs to run five. We just saw the other man do it, so we know Chris Melling can do it too. <clears throat> But it all starts with the break, and right now we're not sold on his break. And you would think it'd be hard for him to change after watching John just pour him in from right there, but he's been breaking from there earlier, and he had two out of three or maybe three out of three uh, dry breaks. Yeah. Again, See, the wing no ball's not even ball. coming. And just the spreads. Look at the spreads. Yeah. aren't very consistent at all. So fortunate to get a snooker. Is looking at pushing out. What's he gonna do with is he trying to tie something up? Yeah, he's clearly uncertain. I don't I don't uh, see anything easy either. I, if he would push over by the nine and just leave it there, Melling would try to kick two rails at the one. Play it mm -hmm. past the six. You know what I mean? Because you, you know he's shooting. Melling's shooting at anything. Nah, he wouldn't shoot at that, Mark. Come on. <laughs> he you just think? kicked to the ball that he could see <laughs> in the last rack. I just feel like yeah, Melling's. I, I, I believe he didn't think he could see it, I swear. Okay, well, maybe. He, he, but he measured and measured and measured, he, and he, he took might, so much time. I don't know. You would think he would have noticed he could right. see it, right? But he's, he's in a tough spot here. I may have to pass this one. I know the cross corner is maybe doable. I don't know. Can he not get at the cross corner? <laughs> well, he, he's shooting. You know, I mean, he's just absolutely. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he could do, and it's not a kiss. He could bank the one down by the nine and let the cue ball go two rails behind the four with top, but it's a little little dangerous. Oh, my goodness. He's really shooting at this? <laughs> you got to be kidding. Uh, I can this is say a this. trick shot we used to shoot way back in the day. Freeze I, the cue ball and draw the cue ball back. I can honestly say I've never seen anyone in a match push out here and have the opponent take it and then jack up like that and shoot at it. So this is a first. This would be a pretty shot, though. Just don't draw it back and scratch. <laughs> That'd be ugly, wouldn't it? <laughs> shaking his head, I would be shaking my head, too. Yeah. He's got a couple of voices in his head right now. Talking to himself. Nah, can't do that. Wow. Well, this goes in. Nope. He's gotten him elevated. <laughs> J 
John's just got to sense this maybe and take the cut on the two from like yeah. just around the headstring now. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I mean there's no way to get back. It gives you a chance to win the man, the tournament that right. way. You try to stab this ball and create something, you you could hit it great and not even get a shot. No, I so just, I'm just shooting this in and going to the rail. Really? He's No, you can't do that. you got to just roll it in, John. And take your sh cut shot on the two. You're not missing a ball anyways. Unless he's kicking it. I don't know that he is. But no. Wow. But still, he's going to hit it perfect. and Well, no, and not get a shot. All right. I mean, you couldn't hit that ball any better and still. Right. I guess he's just got to kick this in two cushions now. That's about all. No extensions. Both players have used both your extensions. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's aiming a little to hit underneath it a little too much. Oh, no, he hit it pretty well. Hair underneath it, but not bad. He's going to make uh, Chris come with one. So a pretty natural path to go up and down the table. Probably for the three in the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris is, Chris is definitely shooting. You don't have to wonder what he's going to do. <laughs> he just took on a push out, though. <laughs> yeah, one he, out of 100, maybe. That ball had to look like a hanger compared right. to what he's willing to shoot at. Right. Couldn't draw back for the four on the side or just stop and have the four in the corner, kind of whatever he wants to do there. That's what I like. The least movement possible. Four in the corner is an easy shot. Now we're looking at uh, eight to five and certainly uh, within range. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Whew. That was hit pretty heavy there. Yeah, that was with intent, though. He wanted to keep the cue ball there. Nice speed. from eight to five and definitely within striking distance. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to need a better break still. I just don't see what would be wrong with switching sides of the table at this point. No, not at all, especially if you just watch his results and don't look at John's results. I mean, you just cannot gunfight every rack with someone playing as well. You've got to get a couple games where he doesn't get to play. Yeah. If he could break and run two racks from here now, it's a there's a ton of pressure on Mora, and you're dead in it for sure. Mora would like to close it out right away so he doesn't have to face that type of pressure. Not because he's afraid of pressure, but just because he's afraid of the match sometimes slipping away from him after he's played so well. Okay, he's moved, right? He moved out to the center at least. Hallelujah. Well, uh, he's trying to make the one come straight down in the other corner uh, for position. We'll see. Nine ball came out hot. He made the one. Eight. He made two also. And he's got a shot. He's okay. He's urging the crowd on to give him a little applause. He's got a chance. That's exactly where he wanted the one to end up. It's just straight down in that corner. There is a <laughs> he's still cheerful. Three in the morning playing for days. What a good energy this guy has. He may have to play for the little gap in between the four and the six there. 
I don't know if he has enough angle easily to shove on the other side of the six, and I'm not so sure he would want to, be honest with you. Mm-hmm. That may make things a little tougher to get on the four, but looks like he's going towards the six with the cue ball. Like that. <laughs> and there he's really taking a chance. He almost got yeah. snookered, I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, that's the issue with uh, bumping balls that are open. Okay. Well, this is going to be a match no matter what. Perfect. Well, that'll do. Just pinch it back enough where you can reach easily. And he's going to be a little stretched there. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, no. no he's, he's comfortable good. with he's this. Good. <laughs> He's not twitching. <laughs> I can tell you that. Eight six is our score. And then he made a couple balls on the break. I think the first time he's made a ball the entire match. And now yeah. eight to six. Three in a row by Melling finally. He's found the spot on the table where he made a ball. Yeah, he made, uh, I believe, the wing ball as well. Uh, he made uh, the eight ball trickled in. Well, pay attention to that five ball, because if he's got the five ball going in from here, breaking, he's got the best of it on the break, believe it or not, because the one tracks even better than the way that uh, just tracks straight down the table. It doesn't have to hit multiple rails. Now he hit those a little weak. I mean, yeah. he didn't have the timing correct there. He had right English on the cue ball. Yeah, it tailed. He, he missed, he missed it. Look yeah. at the, nothing. Just the one ball came down table. Nothing else. But mercifully, he didn't leave a hanger. Uh, but he should have the worst of it here. I'm not sure exactly how yet. Now he could take a good chance at. He could take a good chance at trying to bury him behind the eight here. And if the two doesn't pass, I might do that. Meaning. It, Chipping the right, the one on the right side, mm -hmm. trying to go one, two, three rails yeah. inside the eight, nine. If we can get the overhead here, uh, Jeremy, now you can show us. Yeah, you're saying come over here. Yeah, off on this, the right and side then, two, and then third rail, and then try to drop. Yeah, exactly. And that's if the two doesn't pass, especially because if, even if I give him a little look, look at the one, the two could be an issue. So we'll see. He may be going for the bank. He may be going the other way. There's a number of ways you can go here. Okay, and uh, now he's going to get a bump and give up a shot, so. But like you said, the two doesn't pass the eight, so it's not that easy from here. No, but. it's that's huge. If the two doesn't pass the eight, that he needed to try and bury him for sure. There was, it was worth it. Yep. Now I'm looking at playing a carom on the eight from the two. The first thing is first. He needs to play the one. He sees the side pocket could come into play here. I think he can get past the side from there with just a high ball, maybe a hair of inside. I don't think he needs to try and hit before the side here. I think that if he tries to hit before the side, he's going to be dropping down here in a maybe a suspect area going towards that five ball with the cue ball. I think he can do it with a touch of inside, just a medium stroke. Okay, he decided to hit two. Pretty nice speed. I don't know if it is. Oh. I don't know if it is. Yeah. Now he can play the two-eight combo. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't even think he has that. Oh. that look live. It's close. I think he can get at it. Is he trying to just edge it? Play safe behind. You're right. I don't think he got him completely. Nope. Completely agree with that. <laughs> if he rubs off the two, it looks like he introduces the three into the equation here. Or even going to the rail and into that uh, seven. seven ball, which 
But if he catches it thin, he may be able to escape. He may be able to, to get by there. Can't tell. Is he swinging with a level Q? If he's swinging with a level Q, he's trying to edge it. Like oh, so. Oh, what a Great nice shot. shot. Oof. Did not chip the seven and allowed that cue ball to get way down on the end rail. And even though Melling can see it, there's not much he can do with it. No, I, I, the way the five and the eight there, it's hard for Melling to bury the cue ball anywhere. Uh, really, he's got to get a little lucky uh, to get the cue ball hidden now. He might be banking at the two. I totally agree he may be banking at this two ball, trying to go into the nine with the cue ball, probably something like that. Uh, and, and he can hit it with a little bit of pace because it can settle along the long rail there in a lot of places that doesn't uh, favor and again, John if, Moore. Yeah. And again, if the three doesn't pass the eight, it's not easy to get position on the three. You have to get on the other side of it. So mm -hmm. he could hit this with, like, like Mark said, a medium good speed and try and give yourself a good chance of making this long rail bank and just try and go right into that. That nine with the cue ball, I think. If he kicked at that ball earlier, he should bank at this because this is actually a better shot because you can win with this shot. Yeah. Earlier, yeah, the five was buried over on the rail but where it didn't pass the nine. So I'm trying to think of a nice, clever safety shot here that gives you a little bit of uh, room for error. Right. I don't see one that gives you any room for error. Like, there's, there's a couple out there that have to be struck perfectly, but... You hate to lose the tournament here playing safe. But he is. Oh, double he kiss. Got a nice double kiss. <laughs> All right. And that's truly the reason I think the bank shot was a better deal. Yeah, he's going to have to kick over here in between the 5 2 with a lot of spin, it, it appears. That's the only way it works out is if you get a double kiss and you're fortunate. Yeah, you know, where the, the other thing, at least you're. You're in control. Can he? Oh, he can't get around that nine. The, the angle's not there. It's too much. So he's in trouble. He's gonna. Can he bend it on the, to the low rail? I think he can two rail it. I think oh, he can two go rail? underneath the five. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You're right. Good call. There's yeah, a that lot of offers for a lot of ways to get safe. I think. But yeah. there's a lot of ways that it doesn't because if it hits that six, there's no separation, and you can easily no. get the worst. The ball is gonna have to float over behind the eight and nine or yeah. something. Now, why is he elevating? He's trying to do what I said. He's trying to go into a one rail for some reason, I think. Now, he went two, and, but I didn't know why he elevated on it. I'm not sure what he was trying to do, dig on the cue ball. But again, he's going to, if the three doesn't pass the eight, this isn't easy. Even if it does pass, it's not easy because if you don't get real tight. straight in. Yeah, yeah, it's tight. Now, he may have to cut this in the other corner and go three rails uh, for position, short side position on the three where he's standing. Uh, I think he can draw over there, too. Oh, in the other pocket? Really? Ooh. Maybe it's too thin. It looks yeah. a little thin for that for me. but well, He definitely it. tapped his tip one way or the other. Yeah, I like just going with the natural hit here, even though you have to run the ball quite a ways. But it looks pretty natural. Oh, he hit it thick. Hit it thick. And he may get away with it as far as not losing the match right here. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing routine here. <laughs> Chris has uh, thrown the dice here a couple times, and it's come out pretty good so far. Yeah, well, I agree with him going, and going after that, that's for sure. But uh, as you said, it... Kind of a miss you don't you don't expect even though we're late in the night and it wasn't a super easy shot but just at this level these guys in the finals you expect them to bury those and not really selling out anything I don't think and not an easy safety is he trying to chip the two below the seven and run the cue ball over oh mm. wow what a great hit mm -hmm. still left him a, a look he really shaved that one Mark. <laughs> Ooh, I thought he was trying to hit it thicker and move the ball past the seven a little bit and float over behind the nine. Look at Chris. He's over pointing at the rail. He's going to drive this in the corner and just bar pull it over and park it behind the three and go in the corner with the three. Be a great shot. And... Hit pretty well. Yeah. So he connected on that sweet. You ready for 8-7? Oh, it's going hill hill. <laughs> for sure.
John really hasn't made mistakes, uh, but uh, Chris has cranked up the shot uh, making. It looked like it was a little thick, too, and then he kind of stood up before that shot. Something had maybe bothered him in the crowd a little bit. No, John, since the first two games, really hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah, as good as he's played, it's going to end up being 8-6. Or 8-7, I mean. And Melling breaking. In his last break, he didn't get a good hit the time before that. He broke him well. Eight seven is going to be our score. <laughs> He's got no quit. Where are we at, Melling? Eight fifty five. More eight thirty five. <laughs> More hit him with six in a row there in the middle now. Melling has retaliated with four in a row and breaking. He needs to not back off on these. I think he lost his timing last time because he just kind of wanted, didn't want to hit him that hard, but he needs to go ahead and hit him a little bit here. Sometimes I kind of wonder if it, if a guy had a personal coach just to kind of maybe just throw that little general reminder oh, in there or something that would be advantageous. I know Poole doesn't pay well enough to have a personal coach, but. No, I mean, I mean we talk about it all the time. If it paid like those other sports, that we they would definitely have, we would definitely have coaches and 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 other support uh, positions. Uh, oh, the nine was in action. He made a ball though, and, and looks got like he's got a shot. Yeah, thin cut. He, can he almost do it. scratched. He almost made the nine. <laughs> Lots of drama. Oh boy. Looks like he's gonna. Cut this in and rub these balls nicely, too, like it's not going to be a problem going off this six or three. Right. may end up a hair long distance on the uh, two. I don't even think he can hit it to where he catches the three full and stops over the seven. Right. So I think he's good. Uh, just don't baby it too much. Don't be afraid of the little bit of a collision on these on the two balls. I don't think you need to go around them. Yeah. Oh, that helped. Yeah. That helped tremendously. And now you just dial eight for long distance. It's all good. That's right. Got that angle now. Maybe he has to go two cushions. He's going to have to pound it and, and make sure it doesn't lengthen enough to catch the four coming out. So we'll see if he, maybe he'll pinch draw it past uh, the four. Okay, if he catches the four, see, that's the issue. And that's just from getting a little out of line. Uh, and mm -hmm. not saying he could do much about it. He had to shoot right. the one and go into them balls, but still. This kid's a shooter, and this is what his game's all built on. So straight shooting is Chris Melling. He has to make this shot if he wants to win the tournament anyway. He doesn't seem a bit bothered by it. He's happy to be at the table. I might be on top of it there. Okay, actually, it's pretty good. A little off angle still, though. Yeah. Is he going to play a carom shot here? Or is he gonna play he's a looking combo? at it quickly. It's either that or in the corner. I think he's, he's playing, playing the carom. carom. Yeah. This is dangerous. This is missable, oh, too. Oh, he might have gotten corner hooked. No, that he's okay. Ball, he's okay. All right. Boy, Look he hit that with a lot of speed, though, didn't he? <laughs> like it looked like he could follow in. Well, Jeremy Jones said this is going hill hill. Oh, I'm, yeah. After I'm a inclined. couple things happened here and there with John. Uh, yeah. He made that great shot. He come over and bumped the four. Didn't get a shot. <laughs> Going right at the side pocket one last time here. Just to... <sighs> yeah, gonna chalk up. Draw back just a little bit. He has good cue power. Oh yeah, he can draw the cue ball. That's for sure. There, get a little giddy up. Gets him close to the nine. <laughs> And just this nine is all that stands in the way of eight eight match. No matter, no matter how well John Mora has played. <laughs> Crowd loves it. All right. 
Just like my wife always says, if you don't like this, there must be something wrong with you. One last rack for the title in the picture for eternity that will fly high above the Derby City Classic. To me, that's the coolest thing. Get your picture up here. The money will be gone by next year. No worries about that. But mm -hmm. you will have the picture here forever. And suitable for the last event. Late in the hour, comes down to the case game. <laughs> All um, the money's made after midnight. Remember that for pool. <laughs> right. Got a lot of sweaters still here. A lot of yeah. fans still in the stands. Yeah, we actually need a bigger venue. We've outgrown this venue. The rooms are sold out. There's, you can't really market more seats because there is no more seats to sell. Right. Which is a shame. You know, it, it really it hinders growth for the sport, and everyone would benefit from growth. And how about the AccuStats crew? I mean... Buster's still operating the boom camera. Julian, our full art director, unbelievable. <clears throat> Levi's did a great job. Bill Hendrickson. A little bump of the fist. I, I truly did not believe this match was going hill hill when the, 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 there was a couple messy racks that started this flurry. Yeah, there were a and, couple of kick saves and just a couple of double kisses and right. things that had to happen just right. What and about the kick are. when he could see the four ball? He kicked at the four. You no, could he see weren't. it. Okay. Oh, boy. Finally. Oh, is it, but the one's getting on the end rail. Okay, but finally he parked the cue ball, made the wing ball. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. from that, he went right back to that spot where he's. <laughs> he's a little elevated. The one good thing here is what he could do is he's got the five there, so he can chip the one to where into the rail, into the five, and bring him right where he's looking now on the eight. It's a shot that could be. You could sell out on it if you catch it a little bad, but the five's there to slow the one down. And then you could really bury him behind the eight. Not sure what else he... That's what I see. He's aiming the one at the rail into the five. And then he'll just float two rails, I believe. I don't... Is he looking at something else? No. Nah. Yeah, I don't know. He, I don't I mean, think he's, so. He's thinking of that. He has the capacity to hit the ball thin. This is going to be a pretty thin hit if he's trying to bank the one into the five, though. Yeah, that, well, it's mm -hmm. pretty natural, though. I mean, it's not yeah. going to have a lot of speed. Uh, the one's not going to have as much speed as you want, but you still want the the five to slow the one down when you bring the cue all back towards the eight. Like that, see? Oh. And if you get jellied up behind the eight, <laughs> you're really good. <laughs> like so. Yeah, oh, boy. Shy, so. What a shot. Look at this. It's been a long time since Moore has been to the table. He has to come to the table and face this for his life. <laughs> his tournament life rests on this. That's what makes it sport. You don't know the outcome, you know, and the, everything's on the table here. Yeah, it's a, this is a, this is what we come here for. For sure. Just like we talked about before, just all these, all those great games, those great different sports inside of games inside of sports, or they stick around because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't, you know, the the favorite doesn't always win, or what you might call the favorite, mm -hmm. or consider the favorite, or or even the guy who it really looked like was playing the best doesn't always win. Right. So Mars going this way. He has the other one rail route. Well, he's thinking about this because he's trying to get to that back rail. He's trying to create a little, uh, some separation here. Easily whiff the whole thing. Wow, what a hit. Come on. How good are these guys playing? Uh, world class. It's not necessarily going to be perfect for him, but still. From where he was at. He that's... hit it how he wanted to. And it could have turned out favorable. Didn't. Oh, well, it's still tough. Though. Oh, very I mean, tough. The cue ball's going to have some speed, so. Yep. We've already seen what both these gentlemen are made of, and we're going to hey, see Chris. it at least one more time right. here. I, I would bet anything that he goes at the nine there, too. Well, no, know. that's the proper shot. When you're thin like this, yeah. instead of trying to shoot the shot unnaturally with a lot of English, hey, can I level out and just use another ball to slow me down? Nah, well, and plus, you put a little action on the nine there, something good can happen. Yeah, but he won't murder it. He'll hit it kind of medium, like so. Like, see? Oh, boy, look at that shot. Look He's good. Shot. He's good. Yeah. He had a nice shot on the on the That's two. All. Yeah. 
Now something really freakish has to happen for Mara to win. Oh, he's in a good spot here. There is an angle out there that's a little funny, but he's okay. If the six was so, uh, the seven was over just another inch or two, that'd be a big difference. But he's all right now. <laughs> oh boy! And what a great safety hill, 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 uh, deaf touch coming three cushions and laying him behind the eight, and then great hit by by Mora. He can't can't right. really say much other than that. You feel sorry for him, Pemmy. Well, yeah, he's he played it. He played his butt off though. He just got one stolen from him, him tonight here, Mark. It's happened multiple times this week. Chris Melling. <laughs> well, he earned it. Sure did. From nowhere, Chris Melling comes comes through to steal this title away from John Mora. Oh, he's going to be a happy guy. He sure is. Good for him. Good for him. John Mora made him earn it. <laughs> Chris Malik. Yeah. Incredible comeback from 8 3 down. <laughs> Look at Jason Shaw's right there. He loves it because he does that routinely too. So. Right. And that's really cool. Okay. On behalf of AccuStats, thank you for joining us tonight. Until we see you again, drive safe and good night.